Hello all you beautiful thinking people, you welcome back to Advocation X and your host, Claude. Today I have a topic that's going to be quite messed up, but it needs to be said. Before I begin, please hit that like button, subscribe, show some love, help this channel move forward in the algorithm. The more people subscribe and the more we hit that like button, the more we will be noticed. It's fine to me too, really, if you become a member. And if you hit the notification bell and select all, so that way you miss nothing going forward. So, there's an issue that's arisen in this last while. And I guess it's very closely connected to the super bad cold illness. Now, those of you who've been suffering in many, many different ways through this past two years in the super bad cold illness, and I don't mean by being affected by it personally, although many of you probably have uh, loved ones or good friends or people uh, in your circle that you can point to who uh, have experiences that you can allude to. What I want to discuss right now is this. The people other than hospitalized or dead that have been affected most deeply and profoundly are those people who are exercising their freedom of choice and have families to feed and businesses to run. They've been extinguished, they've been silenced, and what we would call in a situation that could be very easily called excessive, unconstitutional censorship. You remember there's something called freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom to assemble, and freedom to discuss your disagreements with those who you disagree with. What would that mean? Would a protest be illegal under those circumstances? If your constitution says that you can express yourself in that regard, how in heaven's name can anybody say it's illegal? Okay, well, let me tell you how. If you complain about my freedom of speech, somebody who believes what you're saying is just could say, well, Clyde, you're doing something illegal. You shouldn't be talking on YouTube because it's disturbing somebody else. And you know what I would say to you? I would have to say, speak to my lawyer. Because as far as I've been advised, it's a constitutionally protected event where I am allowed to express myself. If I am not shooting off guns in the midst of people trying to sleep to go to work, like here in the hammer, there's a ton of shift workers. So let's just imagine those shift workers, starting at all different times of the day, have to go to work and all you can hear is me, ch -ch boom, all day. Ch -ch Boom! They're blanks, by the way. So they're not going to injure anybody. It's not that I'm firing to, to hurt people, but I'm just firing to make noise. Ch -ch Boom! Well, first of all, the police are going to come and arrest me because the area that I'm doing this in is not meant for shooting off firearms. I could then say, but this is my protected right, and I'm using this as a form of free speech and protest but I think there'd be a good argument that that would be wrong. But now let's say I'm in the same position and I'm blowing my horn. Is that illegal? If someone was to cut me off in the middle of the night and I blew my horn at them, should I then be arrested? No, of course not. You know that would be asinine and absolutely foolish, regardless of whether it woke you up from a deep sleep and you had to go to work the next day. But if I had thousands and thousands of cars and we were all blowing our horn excessively right through the night or in the hammer during the day. Could that be looked on as an inappropriate action in a space not intended for such? I would argue yes. So we have to look at the totality of every circumstance before we start jumping on the bandwagon to support or go against a certain action. If you don't agree with me, by all means, the comments are below. Tell me what evidence you have to show that that is not a true statement. 
If I want to support your cause and you're doing something illegal, I might say, you know what, I like your cause, but I'm not going to support you. Or I might say, you know what, I don't like your cause and I want you out of here. But your cause is totally legal and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. If that's not a scenario you can get behind, then I understand. Please, in the comments, give me some information that will help change my mind. Now that we've established, or I've established, and you may or may not establish, but if you're one of my beautiful thinking people, I think you've already established that that statement is true. If I don't like what you're doing and I say, hey, police, I want you to make that a crime and I want you to arrest that person because I don't like what they're doing. Do you believe that's a viable cause to create a law or a bylaw or a reason to arrest me? I would assume that you are a beautiful thinking person and you realize that that is not correct. And if you were to see that happening, would you step up and say, hey, excuse me, but that's not right. That person is not doing anything illegal. They're exercising their constitutional and God-given rights to free speech. Should they be stifled? Should they be censored? Should they be drowned out, starved out, or in any other way shut down because you don't like them? Ask yourself that question. I really want you to ask yourself that question. Now, I'm just going to link two subjects together. I want you to look at what's going on in these trucker convoys around the world. And ask yourself a question. Is there an issue that needs to be addressed when so many people around the world are sharing the same views? Tell me in the comment section. Do you agree there is something inherently wrong when people around the world are expressing discontent over the same issue? Now I want you to answer me this. If people are expressing discontent at the inconvenience of a lawful and legal protest where there may be noise and there may be revelry of a wonderful kind because it's a peaceful protest. Children playing on bouncy castles, skating on the ice, playing hockey in the midst of the protest. Now I need your opinion. Is that a reason to stop an arrest and put people in massive increased discomfort over their already perceived discomfort and reason for their protest. Please tell me in the comment section. Let's get past that point. This is what I want to equate this to. There's the same thing going on in the finance market. Everybody believes that the market is such a wonderful place. You can become rich, you can this, you can that. How about if it was rigged against you? How about like the protesters, people are rigging rules and laws to make it impossible for you to actually get ahead. Is that fair? Tell me in the comment section. Is it fair that I invest my hard earned money, which is very little, in the hopes that something is going to hit well and I'm going to do very well for myself? Like they do with our pension funds. They take all of our pension money and they invest it in things that they believe are going to go up. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen often in my pension funds that the money goes down. When you find out why it's doing that, don't you think you should be able to call some authority and say, that needs to stop? Me, as just a hardworking person, putting all of my earnings in there, needs to have some fairness, some way for me to be heard and seen, so that they're not just blatantly stealing my money, right in front of my face with the authorities looking at it going oh well there are rules we've written the rules who's we well we're ex hedge fund managers and ex you know advisors in the financial field and this and that we work for some of the biggest corporations in the world that's why we're so qualified to make these rules and you say but why are these rules not working for me oh well you play by the rules. I mean, you know, figure out how to play by the rules. But I see the book and it's full of about 17,000 rules. How am I supposed to understand all these rules? That's your problem. 
So who was the one who decided that there'd be so many rules? And written in such a way to make it impossible for the normal Joe to be able to do anything with it. Oh, you'll have to do your own research. So we did. In the financial industry, we did. We looked at those stocks that they call meme stocks. And we supported them because they were offering services that we actually fundamentally love. And we did not want to see them go extinct. And after that, we started to see, coming on the surface, the reasons why there needs to be fairness in these kind of issues. We were essentially being ripped off right in front of our faces. But we didn't stop there. We did more digging. We read more rules. We looked at more procedures. And we started to make noise. And guess what? Change is finally happening. Was it uncomfortable? Hell yeah! What change in this world that's worthwhile has ever been comfortable? What change has ever come to us and just everybody said, Oh, beautiful, let's do it. Go back to the horses. Nobody wanted to get rid of their horses. Why? Because they paid for them and they were in their possession and they owned them and they could do what they wanted to them. They could burn them with branding irons. They could keep them in tiny little pens. They could like have them shocked by, by electric wire. They had all kinds of things going on and they wanted to protect them. But somebody said, I'm gonna make a horse that doesn't need hay or oats. One that can sit out in the weather and you don't have to worry about it. You crank it over and off it goes and they made the automobile. And people protested. They hated it. They didn't want it. But they had their say. They were allowed to speak up. They were allowed to fight tooth and nail to make it happen. And guess what? How many horses do you see running around the streets nowadays? Okay, so sometimes there are good changes and they come about by strife. They don't come about that easily. There's constantly a difficulty. The people who tried to introduce the automobile were ridiculed and criticized and basically discouraged in every way, shape or form, but they persevered. This is what's going on with the trucker rally right now. And I think, in my opinion, and believe me, it's a humble opinion, we all need to support these people. There is nothing they are asking for that is unreasonable. They are asking that they not be forced, coerced, whatever you want to call it. If you said, listen, I'm doing a study and I would like you to do this for me and I'll pay you $1,000 for it. We sign the papers. We say, okay, I'm going to do that for you. You're going to give me $1,000. It's a done deal. Unless you knew ahead of time that you were going to kill me. Well, then I can't consent to you killing me. I also cannot consent to you harming for me for the rest of my life. Even if you discussed it with me, that you know, you could die. Even so, it is not legal to enter into that agreement because you're looking at the chances of dying as being nothing. Because, of course, do they ever present to you that, well, you have an 85% chance of dying. Would you like to sign now? But what if they said you had a 1 in 500 million chance of dying. We're going to pay you extra because of that one tiny possibility. And you say yes. And you do die. You have no leg to stand on. Until the next person in the test dies. And they have no leg to stand on. And the next person dies. And the next and the next. And finally somebody says, wait a second. This is unfair. They've been telling these people that they were going to be fine one in 500 million and they're dying like flies. Well, then you don't have, you don't have the right to consent to your death in that regard. When somebody says, I don't want to sign your paper and I don't want to be part of your test. Why would you be angry with them? Why would you want to chastise them, separate them, make them into something they're not? Because they don't want to sign the papers. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's incredible what I've seen happening to the trucker rallies. So many wonderful people have been attending them, supporting them, donating to them, bringing them food, water, 
fuel, anything that they need. You sit there and condemn these people, not you, but the people that are doing it. So these people condemn these truckers and say they're horrible people and they need to go and all this stuff. Who is it that's giving them all of this stuff? Are they other truckers? Or are they regular human beings, regular citizens, who are recognizing they have the right, God-given and constitutionally, the right to say we don't like what you're doing to us? And they're willing to support. Check yourselves. Those of you who think there's something wrong with people expressing their own God-given and constitutionally given right to speech and protest, God forbid you are ever in a position where you need help, where you need a group of people to join you in unison to help change some horrible past. Folks, do your research. And I mean really do your research. If you listen to the mainstream news, don't even talk to me because you're not doing your research. If every time you turn on your TV, your radio and everything else, all you hear is one message, the sky is green, 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 and you come up to me and tell me the sky is green, if you expect me to be so foolish as to agree with you, actually, let me rephrase that because you know what? I would agree with you. And I'd walk away and I would let you go on thinking the sky was green. <sighs> what do they say? Don't argue with a fool because they will beat you to their level with a stupid stick. So people, don't fight with people who can't see past their stupid stick. Now, don't hate those people either. Because remember, every time they turned on their TV, their radio, they heard the sky was green. Who am I to judge them as being bad people? They're not bad people. Misinformed people? Yes, absolutely. Don't get me wrong. If down the road, an optical specialist, a serious expert in his field, looks into my eyes and says, do you see that number there? And I say, no, I don't see it. And they go, ah, knew it. You are only slightly colored blind. You cannot see the color green. I would go back to that person and say, I am so sorry for not believing you. The sky just might be green. I just couldn't see it because of my color blindness. But I still won't condemn that person before, in between, or after. Folks, very important stuff for all of you to take home with you, to share with everybody you know. Stop the division. Stop the hatred. And by stopping the division, I don't mean look at everybody who's on the side of the protesters and go, well, you know what? We need to be unified, so get on my side. No, that's, that's not how we stop the division. Do you know how we stop the division? In one second flat? By listening to each other. By being compassionate, loving, and understanding. If you can't do that for your fellow man, woman, child, what are you doing on this earth? Seriously, think about your legacy. What are you leaving behind? Did you make a bunch of money and you left it in a big pot? Who cares? Who cares? Because as soon as the government says that money is worth nothing, guess what? It's legal tender. It's worth nothing. So you will end up having left zero as a legacy. But if you loved your fellow man, woman, child, and made sure that you were there to help them whenever you could, and I'm not talking about in the biblical sense where you have to give up everything you own for that person, and they say, I want your car, and you go, here, take my car. Oh, can I have your house too? Sure, take my house. I'm not foolish enough to be spreading information like that, because you'll never be able to live up to it. Nobody's perfect, but try. Do your best. Do your best to be loving, compassionate, understanding, and help your fellow man, woman, child. Please, do as much commenting as you can in the comment section. I want to know what you really think. My future videos always depend on what people actually think and ask questions of. So let me tell you this. 
And please understand, it's 100% true and 100% me. We never give up and we never give in, but we'll always keep an open mind because that's how we gather knowledge. And knowledge is the only power we have. And with that knowledge, we will leave behind a legacy of compassionate understanding and loving kindness. So, please, stay safe, stay healthy, and beyond all, stay as happy as humanly possible.